something I really believe, that you are the sum total of all of the choices that you've made up until now. And anything about yourself or your life that you don't like or isn't working or is immobilizing you is to be looked at in terms of can I grow rather than why did I do it or isn't this wrong? See, the two ways to motivate yourself are deficiency motivation, which says where I am I don't like. I don't like what I've done. I don't like the fact that I can't do this well or I can't do that well. So I will list these things in my own repertoire and then I will be constantly trying to repair those deficiencies, always assuming that I'm deficient, that there's something wrong with me and I'm trying to fix it. And when you do that, you spend your whole life doing that. And you never arrive because your life becomes a series of trying to get someplace else. And it is, if you follow that, if you live that, if you behave that, then what, you, what happens to you is you become a person who will always suffer from this disease called more. Is never operating from deficiency or from lack in their life. They're never saying, I don't have enough. You see, you're never going to get enough. You already are everything. You're everything that you need, think of it for just a moment, everything that you need to have total bliss, perfection of your life, you already are. You already have it. You came into this world with nothing, that's how you're going out, and the time that you have here, it, what you have is your uniqueness, your specialness, and you don't need anything else. Now think on this. If you don't know how to appreciate what you have and where you are in your life, you don't need anything else. Because if you do get something else, you won't know how to appreciate that either. You'll just want more. Or you'll want it to be different. Or you'll want it to be the way it used to be. Or you'll want someone else to be the way you think they should be. Successful people or no limit people or self-actualizing people or inner directed people, however you, whatever labels that have been put on them by great thinkers and philosophers and therapists and people uh, that have uh, looked at human beings, these kinds of people are people who always have enough. <laughs> no limit people are human beings who take what they are and accept it and don't tell themselves that somehow they're deficient because of anything about themselves. This is a very crucial uh, concept for, for me and for virtually all of us. It's this idea of taking your life in your own hands and being the kind of person that you choose to be and understanding that everything that comes your way is an opportunity is a blessing. And it wasn't until I learned how to celebrate virtually everything that came my way that I was able to transcend it. You see, everything that was given to us by God, whatever that is, is perfect. No one can deny the mountains are perfect and the rivers are perfect and the birds are perfect and the hippopotamuses are perfect and, and, and so on. This is just what was given to us. Everything else that you have on our planet, that we have on our planet, comes about as a result of thinking. Thinking. Thought makes it so. Everything that you see that wasn't given to us was created by man as a result of the way that we think, the way that we think. So what gets inside of us as a cell comes about as a result of the way that we choose to think in our lives. Very important principle to understand because once you get a hold of thinking and that it creates everything that you have in your life, you can change and make it as absolutely perfect as you want it to be because thought makes it so. Creative visualization is what we're talking about here. You, the imagery or the image that you have of anything in your life is really like mental behavior. It's like going out and practicing. If you go out and practice with a basketball, shooting uh, free throws over and over again, that's physical practice. Imagery is mental practice. It's mental behavior. 
when you have an image that you can succeed at, some, at something, when you have an image that you can do it rather than that you can't do it, when you get into your car and you have an image that you're going to find a parking place rather than that there'll be no place to park, so you're not looking for no place to park, you will start acting on the image that you have, very much like you will start acting on the practice that you have when you're shooting baskets or when you're hitting a forehand or, or working on your soup or anything else that you're doing. You see, everything on our planet that is alive can never die. It can never die. Life doesn't die. It just transforms. It just moves on to new places and new ways of being. New ways of being. And the way of being that is the most transcendent of all is this way that comes from seeing yourself as love and only having that to give away. Only having that to give away. That is, someone puts pressure on you. Someone says things about you that you don't like. Someone puts uh, attention on you, whatever. Your boss says something to you that you don't like. And out of you comes anger. And out of you comes hatred. And out of you comes fear. Or out of you comes stress. Or out of you comes tension. Why? Is it because of your boss and the way they squeeze you? Never. Is it because of your mother? Is it because of your children? No. What comes out of you always when someone squeezes you is what's inside. This is the, the vital principle of being a no-limit person. It's so crucial to get this and understand that. That if you have any hatred in your heart for anyone in this world or any anger or any fear or any of those things, it has nothing to do with the rest of the world. It only has to do with what you put inside. Now, how does what gets inside of you get there? That's the key. How does it get there? As you think. Only as you think. You see, there's no anger in the world. There's no stress in the world. There's no tension. It's perfect. We've already established. It's perfect place. It works just fine. It's all flowing the way it's supposed to flow. The evidence for it is... It is. <laughs> That's all the evidence you need. Just look around you. Everything out there is a miracle. Everything, including you. There are no mistakes. It's all perfect. And everything that happens to you in your life, whether it's a trauma, whether it's a disease, whether it's somebody treating you in a certain way, there's a lesson in all of it. No limit people understand the lesson in life and therefore celebrate the lessons. It's true. And when you get to that point in your life where you're not cursing the things that come your way and blaming the things that come your way and particularly blaming it on somebody else and you hear it all the time. She hurt my feelings. How's that possible? How can anybody hurt your feelings? Your feelings come from your thoughts. No one can hurt your feelings without your consent. No one can make a fool of you without your consent. No one can embarrass you without your consent. These are choices that you have that come from the way that you think. Someone calls you a name, and then you blame the person who called you a name instead of saying, that's just their opinion. That's just where they are. That's where they are on the path. And it's okay. You, your unique, special, perfect self. And ask any doctor that you know, any surgeon particularly, who's taking somebody into surgery, and ask them which person has a better chance of living, of surviving, say, serious surgery. Is it the one who has a will to live, or is it the one who's just given up? And the surgery and the cases are exactly the same, all right? But the person who has that will, which we can't define, you can't go out and get a bucket full of will and bring it in there. It's an attitude, it's an approach, it's a belief, all right, that you can do something. And when you have that belief about yourself, then, you know, you've got so much better uh, opportunity to be well in your life. And a belief is everything. I don't know if you've ever thought of that. Uh, I watched uh, a little girl, five years old, learning how to swim. And she's holding on to the edge of the pool, and she wants to get over here to the steps. And it's just uh, five feet or six feet, and she'll let go and then she'll hold on again. And she'll let go and she'll hold on again. And... Finally, there comes a time when she lets go and goes for it, okay? You've all seen, you've seen this with your children, you've seen it. And what you ask yourself is, in the moment before that when she was holding on, 
And then look at the moment afterwards. Does she have any different skills? Yeah. What's changed? Yeah. yeah, the skills are, she didn't have any new skills. She didn't learn any skills in that second. What she has is a belief that she can do it. And when you believe it, when you really just believe that you can do it, that's what allows you to swim. And when you think about it now, do you know how to swim? Yeah, so when you dive into the water, you don't think about that. You just know when you dive into the water, you can swim. You don't have any necessary swimming skills or anything like that. Or when you get on a bicycle, you get on, you know that you're going to, unless you believe you can't, because you've never gone out there and tried it and worked on it and done it. Being, to me, means seeing the greatness and the uniqueness in you and never letting anybody else convince you to the contrary. When people ask me, come on, you're always talking about being up and you're always positive and so on, you mean to tell me that you're always that way? This is, I say, yeah, yeah, I really am. And it isn't because I'm out there doing something in an artificial way. It's an authentic response to my having, having gotten the junk out of me. And the junk is the way that I used to think, the way that I used to think. Think for a moment, if you can visualize right here, a clock big clock and the hands on the clock go from 1 to 12 the clock starts right out here with the minute hand and it goes over towards the 3 the hour hand minute hand and that's the time in your life when you are moving away from yourself from your true self that's the time when you are trying to put other people down trying to prove that you're bigger or better than somebody else trying to make yourself right all the time as opposed to uh, being with somebody else. It's like you're moving away and a lot of people spend a lot of time moving away from their true self because your true self is this little child. It's this beautiful little child inside of you that has only love and acceptance for everything in the world and no dis-ease, no absence of ease. You move away towards the three and then you move down here this way and you're still moving away from yourself until you hit the six. The six is the point in your life symbolically, metaphorically here when you are the furthest away from yourself that you can be. It's the low point in your life. It's the point where very many people break down, or many people break down their relationships, or they, they feel full of despair, they feel full of hatred, whatever it may be. And a lot of people die then. A lot of people are put into hospitals then. A lot of people have to really seek out therapy then and so on. And when you're at that sick. There's another part of the clock that goes from 6 to 12 that I think of as uh, living in the light and this is when and see this clock hand never can go back it can't go back it can only go this way it only goes this way as does life it only goes this way forward in this period this place between 6 and 12 that's when you start coming back to yourself that's when that's what enlightenment is that's, what, that's the pathway to enlightenment. When you send out that stuff that is destroying you, that is killing you in one way or another, and you move yourself back over here, and eventually you get yourself all the way back. This is the light over here. This is the place where you can't go back. You'd be tempted. You might be tempted to steal. You might be tempted to, to, to use anger. You might even slip a little bit, and you catch yourself. That's where you start. That's the place to start. Because when you get all of that out, when that's all gone, and I mean gone, and it only comes about as a result of the way that you think, so it's just changing around your approach to life, the way that you think in life. When that starts to go away, what you've become filled up with is what your natural self is, which is this loving, accepting, uh, not fighting the universe, but instead living in it and going with the flow and all of the kinds of cliches that you've heard a thousand times. It is, that's the metaphor there. And you see, every time you try to go back, can't do it. You can't do it.